Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Whether you're a first-time visitor, a long-time member, or anywhere in between, good morning. 
We are glad that you've joined us for online worship with Mechanicsburg Presbyterian Church. We invite you to sit back, to relax, to grab the bulletin from the links that are listed, and to enjoy worship together. Today is Palm Sunday. Beloved children of God, let us worship the Lord. Please join with me in the call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let the people say, God's steadfast love endures forever. Swing wide the city gates. We will come in and give thanks to God. Thank you, God, for answering us. Thank you for being our salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. We are bathed in God's light. We decorate the church with branches. We give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Join me in prayer. Draw close to us, God, on this unusual day, this day of confusion, of shouts, of joy, and cries of shame. Remind us that you are with us always, in all moods and seasons, in darkness and light, and in between. Lead us through this day and this week to the cross, to the tomb, and beyond. We ask in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we make our way day to day, sometimes hour to hour, we are encouraged to remain in community by extending the peace of Christ in our homes and through phone calls and emails to others. Who have you not seen in a while? Reach out to them. For as Jesus Christ has shared his peace with each of us, let us share that peace with each other. The peace of Christ be with you. Please be seated. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. 
If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. This morning, I did my chores, and then I went to sit in front of the house until my mother called me for breakfast. I brought our colt out with me and tied him to the post in front. He's big enough to ride now, so I wanted to take him out after breakfast, see if he would let me on his back. I saw some men walking down the street, men I didn't recognize. They walked right up to our house, and they started untying our colt. The Romans do this thing all the time. They take whatever they want without asking. I was scared. But these men didn't look like Romans. And my neighbors came and said, What do you think you're doing? This cult isn't yours. Are you going to act like the Romans? Then one of the men said, The Lord needs it and will send it back here right away as soon as he has finished using it. I didn't know who they were talking about, but the neighbors nodded and we let them take the cult. Then they brought the cult to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. It was a beautiful day today, the day after Sabbath. My brother and I were walking with our uncle. We were going to the market in Jerusalem. On the road, we heard some noises behind us and we turned to look. A crowd was coming towards us. And in the middle of it, a man was on a young donkey. They were, the people were around him were shouting and people were putting their cloaks on the ground for the donkey to walk on. So that way his feet didn't even touch one part of the ground. My uncle asked what is happening, and our neighbor said, Do you hear what they are shouting? Hosanna! Hosanna! My uncle went into our neighbor's field and helped him cut branches, and they laid them in the road before he crossed. Then we followed the crowd, and they were shouting too. Hosanna! Hosanna! It was exciting. We followed them all the way to the city gate. I was following him with my grandmother. She has been following him for a long time, listening to all he has to say. We were worried when she left us. Bethany is our home, my father said. Then my mother said, families have to stay together. They were so relieved when she came back to us, but she wasn't home to stay, she told us. We are going to Jerusalem, she said. We are going to the temple. My mother and father argued with her. I started to cry, but my grandmother smiled at them. I will go wherever he goes, she said. When she left the house, my parents were still angry and they didn't notice that I slipped out the door. I ran to catch up with her. We walked with his friends all the way to Jerusalem while he rode on the little colt. My grandmother held my hand. She told me, this is the Messiah, the one we hoped would come. His name is Jesus. At the gate of the city, the shouting stopped. People who had joined us along the way seemed to disappear. We went to the temple and the women waited while the men went inside. They didn't stay long. After he had looked around, we started home to Bethany. It's late, my grandmother said. And even though it was getting close to supper time, I didn't think she meant that kind of late.
Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. I didn't think I would see my colt again. When the Romans come, you never see your things again. But tonight the men brought the colt back. I saw the man who rode him. He looked tired. He handed me the rope and smiled at me. Thank you, he said. And then he walked away with his friends. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, for there may be a riot among the people. While he was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. It was just two days before the festival of unleavened bread. We heard rumors that the chief priests and the scribes were trying to arrest Jesus. They wanted to kill him. Here in Bethany, people were on both sides. Some wanted to meet him and talk to him, but others wished he would just move along. They didn't want any trouble here. He was staying at the house of Simon the leper. My brother knew Simon before he was sick, and I had been to his home. I wanted to go, but I knew that my family would be angry if I went to Simon's, let alone when Jesus was there. But I felt I had to go. I snuck out of my parents' house, and just before I left, I picked up the alabaster jar my grandmother had given me. It belonged to her grandmother and was filled with nard from the east, very precious not just because it was expensive, but because it was hers. At Simon's house, Jesus was sitting at the table. I had a feeling I can't explain now, as if a hand under my elbow was guiding me to him, as if a voice so soft no one else could hear was telling me to anoint him. I broke the jar, for that is the only way to open it. The perfumed oil spread over my hands, and I placed them on his head and let it pour onto him. Immediately, his friends began to complain that I was wasting the nard. It could have been sold for hundreds of denarii, they said. The money could have been used to feed the poor. They scolded me, and for a moment, I wished I could run away, that I had never come in the first place. But then Jesus spoke, and his voice was beautifully kind. Let her alone, he said. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me for you will always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. The men around him looked upset and several tried to stop him talking that way, but he did not listen to them. He said, truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. In remembrance of me? I didn't care about that, but I did care that I had made him happy. Later we heard that it was his friend Judas who betrayed him to the priests and Pharisees for money. Please join me in the prayer of confession. God of all goodness and light, forgive us when we disappoint you. Forgive us when we misunderstand or when we act wrongly. Forgive us when we sell out your love for us and buy into the world's approval. Guide us into a better understanding and a deeper faith, we pray. Amen. No matter what we may have done or thought, God will forgive a softened heart and a repentant spirit. We live in the embrace of that forgiveness in history and today and in all the years to come. Amen.
On the first day of the unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparation for you to eat the Passover? So Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out. They went to the city, and they found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. I am a simple man. For three years, I followed Jesus. We went everywhere together, and he trusted me. Now, it was right after we had traveled up to Jerusalem together, and the crowds had welcomed us, we thought we needed to go find a place where we could celebrate Passover together. So we found this upper room and we all sat around a table together and we told stories about how our ancestors had uh, celebrated the fact that God had saved the Hebrew people from slavery to the Egyptians. We all knew that Jesus had troubled the powers that be with his teachings. And as we were eating that meal together, we started to wonder what would happen next. But what did happen next, no one expected. So while we were eating that meal together, Jesus said, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. Now I know he couldn't have met me, and I said so. And the other disciples did the same. But he said, I tell you, it is one of the 12, one of you that is dipping bread into this bowl with me. My chest, it began to hurt, and my stomach began to churn. Surely I would not betray him. And then he took a loaf of bread from the table. He broke it in half and he blessed it. And then what he said amazed us even more. He said, this is my body. Then he took some wine and he poured it into a cup and he said a prayer. And then he said, this is the blood of the covenant that is poured out for many. All this time together with him, and I still didn't understand him. We went out to the Mount of Olives, and then he said, You will become deserters. Not me, I said, even if the others run away. I will never leave you, Jesus. But he said, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. No, Master, I would die first. But he shook his head, and his face looked sad. I was determined that I would not leave his side. But when we got to the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus went off to pray. At least I could keep watch. Well, I thought. But it was late, and we had eaten such a big meal. Sleep came over me, and I dozed off. Jesus' voice woke me. Could you not watch me for one hour, Peter? I hate to admit it, but we fell asleep again. And the next time we woke, we were surrounded by men with, with swords and clubs. Judas, Judas, who had been our friend, kissed Jesus on the cheek and called him rabbi, and the others arrested him. We wanted to fight back, but Jesus stopped us. We were full of fear, and we ran away. We ran away. I went down to the courtyard of the high priest just to see what was happening that night. I tried to blend in, but people kept asking me if I had been with Jesus. 
I denied it. Finally, I swore at a person who asked me, and I shouted, I do not know the man who you are talking about. And then I heard it. I heard the cock crowing for the second time. And I couldn't stop my tears, no matter who was watching me. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests had a consultation with elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. It was early in the morning when my servant came to wake me. There were many people at the door, he said, and they wanted to talk to me. This Jewish festival has brought so many people into the city, I wasn't surprised to be disturbed before my usual hour, but I was aware of a disturbing mood in the air. My usual unflappable servant seemed worried. We went out to the courtyard, and there I saw a man bound and tied, surrounded by the Jewish priests and scribes and their slaves. One came and whispered to me, We have looked for a way to convict this man, but we cannot find it. Those who testify against him do not agree, but he continues to call himself the King of the Jews. And so I asked him, this gentle-looking man, simply dressed, dirty from the treatment that he had received at their hands, I asked him, Are you the King of the Jews? Am I? So you say, he answered. The priest accused him of many things, but he stood silent and strangely peaceful. And so I asked him, have you no answer to all these charges they bring against you? He did not speak. It has been my practice during the festival to release a prisoner for the Jews, any prisoner they wish. Quite a crowd had gathered and I asked them, do you wish me to release this king of the Jews? No, no, they shouted, and I realized they were jealous of him. They asked me instead to release Barabbas, who had been a hero of the insurrection in the city. What would you have me do then with this king of yours? Crucify him, crucify him. Why, what evil has he done? Crucify him! 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 Hey, all you cool cats and kittens! Crucify him! It shall be as you wish. Flog him and then take him to be crucified. Why would they want crucifixion for him? Truly, there can be no more shameful death. Common criminals die on the cross. And yet, I said to them, it shall be as you wish. It was their wish that he die that way, not mine. But I was afraid to stop it.
This is the time in the worship service when we invite you to give back your tithes and offerings to God. We are thankful for all of you who have used the online giving and also who have uh, mailed your offerings into the church. Thank you for doing that. We check the mail twice a week uh, and then we have counters who are on site uh, counting um, six feet apart and uh, are taking that to the bank. So we are incredibly thankful for your gifts as we uh, continue our ministry here at MPC as best we can. Now at this time of tithes and offerings, we encourage you to continue to do that if you are able, uh, but also in this moment as you are worshiping to take a deep breath. And to either out loud or silently during this offertory, uh, give thanks for what is good in your life right now. Uh, give thanks to God. Thank you. I am thankful for you. Also women looking on from the distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the younger and Salome. They used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee and there were many other women who had come up with him from Jerusalem. We were following him all along my friends and I. We cared for him and for the disciples and even after the men ran away afraid we moved among the crowd, keeping as near Jesus as we could. How terrible he looked when they brought him to Pilate, and how much worse after the flogging. The soldiers, they made fun of him. They wrapped him in a purple cloak, laughing and jeering. One even twisted thorns into a crown and jammed it on his head. And they all laughed again and started shouting, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck him again and spat on him and pretended to worship him. 
And then they put his own torn clothes on him again and brought him out to crucify him. Mary Magdalene, Salome, and I followed them on the road to Golgotha. We were there when they offered him bitter wine and when they took his clothes away and cast lots for them. We were there when they nailed him naked and alone to the cross. We were there to hear the pounding of the nails. It was nine o'clock in the morning. The charge against him read, King of the Jews. They tell me there's always a crowd at a crucifixion. The two bandits were on either side of them. That is the sort of person with whom he would die. We who loved him were so close, but we could do nothing to ease his suffering or to save him from death. And people walked by, taunting him all the time. You said you would destroy the temple and build it up in three days. Save yourself, come down from the cross. The religious leaders, they mocked him too, only to themselves, but I heard them. He saved others, why can't he save himself? Let the Messiah, King of Israel, come down from the cross so that we may see and believe. But of course, they didn't really want to see this. Even the bandits, they taunted him. You know that time when the sun reaches its highest? At that moment, darkness came across the land and so it remained for three hours. Then we heard our dear master cry out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Still they mocked him, wondering if Elijah would come and save him. He cried out and he drew his last breath. They tell me the temple curtain tore in two at the exact same moment. The Roman centurion who had been in charge of all of this looked up at Jesus on the cross and he said, truly, this man is the son of God, truly.
Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Help those who are weak. Honor all people. Worship and serve the Lord your God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.